Hey everyone, Evan here with Inner Worlds Astrology, and today I'm going to talk about the Scorpio New Moon on November 4th. Now, before I begin, if you'd like to schedule a birth chart reading with me, the link is in the description below. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get notified of these new and full moon forecasts that I do every two weeks, which is a great chance for me to do a deep dive into the upcoming energies and to predict the energy shifts. Now, this new moon in particular is very significant because it's really one of our first previews of what's coming next year. Uh, this is because we have the north and south nodes slowly shifting from Gemini Sagittarius into the Scorpio Taurus axis. And because this new moon is in Scorpio and it's directly opposite Uranus and Taurus, it's going to activate some of those energies that are really going to shape 2022. Uh, so I have a couple you know, uh, key observations to go through. Number one, the new moon is at 12 degrees of Scorpio, and it's conjunct the sun, as is every new moon. But what's really significant about this is that Uranus is also at 12 degrees, but of Taurus. So this is a really tight opposition, so it's something we need to pay attention to right away. Now, Uranus has been in Tor Taurus for a while. And Uranus is really represents sudden changes, sudden shocks, uh, sudden insights, uh, creativity, shaking up the systems. And so when you're, since Uranus has been in Taurus, we've seen a lot of instability with our value systems, our sense, our sense of material stability, uh, you know, even our you know, financial systems, our currencies. You know, we've seen a lot of interest in things like cryptocurrencies, what's going on with the dollar, and finally, maybe the most significant part of Uranus and Taurus is the supply chain. We've had a very, very, very uh, unstable supply chain. Uh, there have been times when, of course, there's been panic buying and we can't get things, but also just logistically, there's been breakdowns. And so with this new moon, a lot of these cracks in the system are going to be highlighted. Um, and when we think about the signs of Scorpio and Taurus more broadly, these signs are about resources to some degree. That's something they share in common. These can be personal resources, shared resources. Uh, it can be about financial systems. It can be about survival. And, you know, it's also about the money we see and the money we don't see. So the money we have in our own pockets and the money that the people in power have, which we don't see, of course. And again, this is a preview of the North Node, South Node switch to the Scorpio Taurus axis in 2022. The focus next year is very much going to be on our financial system. What do we need to evolve, which I've talked about in the previous uh, new moon forecast, but what do we need to evolve towards financially? How can we create a society that uh, brings that stability for everyone, not just a few people at the top? And so speaking about Uranus specifically, this can actually provide some of that answer because Uranus again rules sudden changes and we might have changes in our value systems, our personal value systems, and that might shape the system that we want to create. So we're all sort of doing a little bit of reflecting based on the materials around us or lack thereof and saying, okay, like how can we, how can we make this work? And so because this new moon is in such a tight opposition to Uranus, I could honest, I could see this as the sort of like, oh no moment when we realize that our supply chain is totally broken. We've always known throughout the year that there are some issues with it ever since, you know, the situation that we're in. But, you know, really it's been cascading and cascading and now we have like ports like the port of LA where ships are backed up and we're starting to see how, you know, ahead of the winter especially, material resources might be in jeopardy. Um, so what are, we have to explore, what are the cascading impacts of those energies in this, in this new moon? And it might shuffle our priorities. So again, Uranus and Taurus ruling our value systems. So as we've been grappling with these other issues, like, you know, new rules, um, new ways of doing things, new expectations, what happens to those things when we have to start worrying about our material stability? That's going to be really interesting. And by the way, does the credibility of the institutions that we rely on erode when we can't get certain things like gas or food? You know, do people want to start to change things? Which is partly what Scorpio energy is about. It's about uncovering the hidden things, the shadowy things, letting them out into the light so that we can 
shed the things that don't serve us so we can evolve and um, kind of, you know, build ourselves, come back and come back stronger, rebuild ourselves. Um, the other thing that's really significant about this new moon is the elemental shift. So for the Libra moon cycle, we were pretty much dealing with fire and air with the exception of a few planets. It was very masculine energy, very much about thinking and communication and passion and action, we, we, which, we, which we saw a little bit of that. But now we have Mars, the sun, moon, and Scorpio. And that's activating our emotional side to some extent. It, it's, it, it's very intense emotions too with Scorpio. And we need to, to explore those intense emotions if we're going to go through a transformation, right? And now that emotions have entered the picture for the first time, really since, you know, uh, the middle of the summer, you know, now we want to dig deep again, face those shadowy sides. Um, you know, the sh shadowy sides of both ourselves and society. What's really going on at the top? What's, we might even be psychoanalyzing the things that we hear and see more than usual because Scorpio is a very intuitive sign, as are all the water signs. But Scorpio is especially good at doing things like psychoanalysis, reading body language. And so all of us on a subconscious level might be doing that as we watch television or as we watch people, you know, speak to us. You know, looking at the body language to say, ask ourselves, why did they say that? Not just what they said. Scorpio is, you know, amazing at that. And, and by doing these kinds of exercises, we kind of, we can be playing mind games with ourselves, but then we might be aware of the mind games that others are playing on us. And so that creates a bit of a power struggle and Mercury isn't quite in Scorpio yet. It's in the later degrees of Libra, but Mercury is going to enter Scorpio shortly thereafter, a few days later. And, you know, alongside Mars there, there's going to be a lot of intensity with using our intellect to dig below the surface. And so when Mars and Mercury are right next to each other, it can create a very sharp intellect, a sharp mind, but also a disputatious one, a confrontational one. So people might be feeling more confrontational than, than usual. And that might make sense, especially when you think about, again, supply chain breakdowns. We don't have everything we need. Well, you know, that can create those types of intense situations and struggles. And Scorpio and Taurus, again, are about survival. And Pluto, speaking of Scorpio, is the ruler of the new moon because, you know, because Pluto rules Scorpio. And so there will be some attention called to, it's going to call attention to the institutions that, you know, kind of exercise power over us. How are they using that power? Are they using that power in ways that we didn't know until now? You know, I could see a news article coming out, um, you know, maybe revealing secret wealth or hidden wealth or, you know, um, certain you know just certain practices that that shock us uh, like are they saying one thing and doing another so you know again secrets coming to light at that at this time and you know i've talked about this in other forecasts but pluto because it's been in capricorn since 2008 uh, we've witnessed this sort of too big to fail um, energy since then but the thing with Pluto and Capricorn is that eventually the system does become too big, right? There is a limit. The system can become big to the point where it falls over on its, on its own weight. It collapses on its own weight. And so into 2022, we're gonna to start to see that accelerate. But right now with this, with this new moon in Scorpio, it's going to give us that preview of what, what does Pluto still have in store? What is, it, what is it still going to be revealing about the institutions that we've, that we've trusted for all these years? Next, we have Saturn also uh, squaring much of these Scorpio planets. So Mars is squaring Saturn, um, the sun and moon as well. And, you know, economic distress with Uranus in Taurus could undermine the ability of the authorities represented by Saturn to enforce a lot of the new rules that we're grappling with. So Saturn, because it's an Aquarius, it's been limiting our ability to gather in groups, which of course we've all witnessed over the past two years. But we might have to gather in groups if our supply chain is busted, right? If you can't get food, if you can't get gas, you need to band together with people. You need to meet your neighbors. You need to make friends with them. You need to maybe grow your own food. You need to share gas. You need to do all these things. And so 
some of the rules that we've been following all of a sudden might seem frivolous by comparison. So we, argu arguably, we've been operating at the lower rung of Maslow's hierarchy of needs the past few, like the past two years, which has been very stressful for everyone. But now we're shifting it into a different area of the pyramid uh, of the hierarchy. So we're kind of still in survival mode, but for in a different way. And so, again, it's going to make us reevaluate, okay, what's the efficacy of all of these new rules and new bureaucratic red tape when I just need to go across the street, meet my neighbor and figure out, like, how are we going to, you know, gather our resources, put them together to get through this long winter? Um, people are going to have to start thinking about that. And, and we have a T-square. So Saturn isn't just squaring the Scorpio energy, it's also squaring Uranus. And there, there is going to be another, a third square between Saturn and Uranus around Christmas Eve. And by the way, Pluto is also going to be, um, conjunct, or Venus is going to be conjuncting with Pluto at that time. And Venus will be retrograde, which I'll talk, in, I'll talk about in a, min, in a minute. So the, that just puts more focus on the financial system of, of how, how are we supposed to challenge the financial system? Again, what works, what doesn't work? We need a structure to operate on, to build something on. And that's what Saturn is. Saturn is that structure. But we, we can't, we get stuck after a while when it becomes too structured and too, um, too rigid. And so Uranus is there to, to shake that. And so as we have this T-square, Uranus is continuing to challenge Saturn and saying, no, you know, the system you have in place is old. There's cracks in it. I'm going to, I'm going to bust through it. And then you have Scorpio on the opposite side saying, we want to know what's being hidden, you know, and, and, and how, what are the mechanisms of your enforcement? And so bet between Uranus and, and Taurus and the Sun and Moon and Scorpio, I see them both challenging Saturn, challenging the authorities um, in really in new ways. And so, so the authority figures represent, represented by Saturn are going to have the spotlight on them for sure. Uh, and that could you know, again, that could be the emergence of secrets, things like that. And then also we have Jupiter in this situation might be helping us. It's trining Mercury for the second new moon in a row. So what happened was Mercury almost made it out of Libra and then it retrograded all the way back. And now it's kind of coming back towards where it was. I think it was around 20 degrees of Libra for the Libra new moon, but for the Scorpio new moon, it's at 28 degrees, but still within a trine. And this time Jupiter is direct. And Jupiter rules expansion of opportunities, but also wisdom, uh, you know, just growth and knowledge. So when it's trining Mercury, we might learn new things, especially through the internet because Jupiter is in Aquarius. So what are we starting to learn and pick up on through idea sharing online? So again, this is where I think about articles coming out. What, what type of article might come out around this time that sheds light on the, you know, the potential secrets or things that have been hidden from us. Uh, so, so that could really activate even more some of that Scorpio energy. Because Jupiter is, very di is a different energy than Scorpio, because Jupiter rules Sagittarius. But these two signs still have some synergy in the sense that Scorpio wants to dig below the surface to find things. And then you have to do that of first to gain that higher wisdom. But in this case, it might be the reverse, where Jupiter is helping to give us a gift, uh, you know, through some type of new piece of information, handing that over to Mercury, which rules the mind. And all of a sudden we're like, oh my God, all, I, I didn't know that before. And then we start to make all the connections. And, and with Mars and Scorpio, by the way, it's just relentless. You know, so Mars is the original ruler of Scorpio before Pluto came along or before Pluto was discovered. And, you know, Mars and Scorpio is like a drill. It's going to get below the surface. It's going to find something. And in a way, it can be fixated on and, and, and too determined to find something. So sometimes Scorpio is paranoid and it, it, it feels things that aren't really there. So we have to be careful of that as well. We can't just say, I'm going to find a secret, therefore a, secret, a secret's been found. Sometimes secrets need to be part of an ebb and flow. There has to be an authenticity to it, right? And, you know, because this is a global event, global transit that we're all going through, my assumption is that, you know, people will be able to find the secrets that really matter and that are grounded in some type of truth. 
And, you know, another thing, I wanted to talk really quickly about the numerology of this. So it's not an accident, in my opinion, that we're dealing with November 4th. The number four is very significant in this case. So number one, point number one, fourth sign is cancer. And when we're talking about cancer in a mundane sense, in a global sense, we're talking about things like real estate, housing. And it's also calling attention to the squares because there are four sides in a square. So I'm thinking about this as a, this new moon is a preview of again, the Saturn Uranus square that's gonna happen on Christmas Eve. And it's possible that with all this kind of put together, it's possible that our sense of stability, not just with the supply chain and materials, but with our housing system is shaken. What type of real estate could be impacted during this time. Um, you know, does any of that become less valuable or, or is it taken over by a different institution? Do we feel like we have less control over our, our assets? And I feel like that could really happen because Venus has been in Sagittarius for a while and that's put a focus on the inflation of the dollar because Venus represents currencies and Sagittarius is expansion. So naturally we've had the inflation of the dollar become a problem or it's been the focus now, but you know, um, that's gonna, that could feed into the housing system, right? In the sense that if the inflation gets out of control, let's say your house is $500,000, but a loaf of bread costs $30. What are the, you know, connecting threads of that? What are the cascading impacts? We're gonna have to work that out. And also Venus, uh, I think a day or two after this new moon is gonna enter Capricorn, which is where it's going to be on Christmas Eve retrograding conjunct to Pluto. So again, it feels like the now that the end of the year is within reach and the first quarter of 2022 is within reach, which is when America is going to have its Pluto return, it just feels like this is the beginning of starting to discover like the true cracks in the system. When, you know, anyone and everyone, not just people like me or an economist, people who, you know, spend literally like hours a day trying to research things and forecast things, but just anyone. This might be the time when pretty much anyone and everyone says, oh no, I'm gonna have to start thinking differently about, again, how am I gonna get gas? How, I'm gonna, how, how will I get food? And this is just going to have a, a ripple effect where again, the rules that we've been waiting for and, and abiding by suddenly become a moot point. Um, and again, during this time, we have Jupiter trining Mercury, which might help with this to some extent. So there's a, there's an, a sense of like gaining knowledge. Gaining knowledge, and it can be very fast because Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Uranus changes very rapidly. And it changes when we least expect it. So there's something unexpected as well about this new moon. And, you know, the, the other piece is that the north and south node are in the final, those first two degrees of, of Gemini and Sagittarius before they start to shift into uh, Taurus and Scorpio. So what that means is we've intensified this Gemini energy and the Sag energy at the same time. So with Gemini, we're increasingly focused on the two sides of everything. But we're also taking a self-righteous position on, on what we think is the best side or the correct side or the right side with Sagittarius. So this creates a really toxic environment because again, we're dealing with material insecurity with Uranus and Taurus. And we're dealing with the revelation, probably the revelation of certain secrets from up high, from institutions that make us distrust them. We don't trust the supply chain we don't trust the institutions. We don't even trust our grocery stores. Where does that leave us? At the, you know, it leaves us in a very survivalist position. But somehow at the same time, we might rather get on a pedestal and prove a point. And so I see this as a situation where we lack resources, we're literally worried about what are we gonna do next week? And yet, we don't want help from our neighbor because they believe in something else. They believe a completely different thing politically than we do. 
that's the strangeness, the extreme strangeness of the world we live in right now. And so my advice to, to everyone watching is you're going to have to just abandon the self-righteousness. I know we all have our favorite sides of an argument, but you got to realize that Maslow's hierarchy of needs was not created in a vacuum. Right? It's based on real life and how humans work. And again, if we're worried about what we're going to eat next week, you just have to drop everything else. And I'm not saying that, that maybe that won't be difficult for some people, but just given how strange social media is, you have to be careful about getting sucked into something or a distraction that just polarizes you even more. So, so I think that's the word I'm looking for there is like polarization. We still live in a, a time of extreme polarization, but things like this, crises like what we're dealing with now or about to deal with financially, they're gonna bring some really different people together. Like, oh, you know, my neighbor and I never got along, but now, you know, he's had to help me start my car. And so I'm seeing the human in him. And so during this time, we might see each other as more human. Maybe it's a time to unplug. And maybe, you know, just because of all this Aquarius energy, especially with Saturn there, there could be restrictions to what, you know, maybe there's gonna be temporary shutdowns to the internet or to our electricity supplies, our electricity grids. And again, in moments like that, in shortages, we have to think local. We have to think in a neighborly way. And as we start to see the human in others, we start to see the truth about the institutions that are lording over us. And we start to realize, oh my God, they've been dividing us this whole time to conquer us. And once we see the we in all of us, that's a lot, there's a lot of power to that. And so I see this as a time of transformation, potentially almost as a precursor to the age of Aquarius, which we're very close to entering. So the age of Pisces has all been about delusions. You know, uh, like what percentage of people are intoxicated when they're watching the nightly news? 50%, 60%, a lot of people. And that to me is the essence of the age of Pisces, the late stage of Pisces, where it starts to get distorted and escapist and extremely delusional. But Aquarius is an air sign and it's about mental clarity. And so as we go through these struggles, as we transform ourselves with the Scorpio energy, energy, we're going to get mental clarity in some way. And it's going to happen through the local things, getting along with our neighbors again, being more mindful, unifying, tapping into that revolutionary spirit that we all share as people, as citizens. And so if I were you, I would pay attention to that now and get a head start on that. Think about the things that are deluding you. Think about the things that you're buying into unnecessarily or without thinking about it. Really like scrutinize those areas of your life. Tap into higher consciousness, which is what Aquarius can be about. And tap into that higher consciousness with people that you would never have partnered with. Because there's a lot of power and I think about, you know, Aquarius as a colony of ants. It's that classic strength in numbers thing. We're individually all very small, but if we develop that sort of colony or that hive, then we can be unstoppable. I think about when in my last apartment I had an ant an infestation. It was insane. I couldn't figure, I couldn't get them all because there's too many of them. That's what we're heading towards. We're heading towards a situation where we all become the ants, which probably doesn't sound attractive to anyone watching this, but, but it's the truth of where we're heading just metaphorically. Like we have to find those connections between ourselves. And the last thing I wanted to bring up is the actual dollar, the American dollar and the state of our currencies. So Taurus, rules things of that nature currencies financial systems and with uranus there that's all being shaken up so the value of the dollar can certainly fluctuate during this time but you know between that and the venus and sag and then venus retrograding in a, in a few months like i'm really seeing a high risk of the dollar just tanking absolutely collapsing and that's going to prop up cryptocurrencies 
So I've always thought, yes, Bitcoin is going to keep skyrocketing in, in value, even though it, it started to drop and lose a bunch of its, like, you know, 40% of its value and everyone freaked out mid-year. Bitcoin is still on an upward trajectory. But the reason that Bitcoin will be very valuable is not, what, is not the reason you want. It's going to be valuable because the dollar is not valuable. So let's say Bitcoin hits 250. Uh, if you converted that to the dollars once it hits 250, that's going to buy you like, you know, not that much once the dollar, once the inflation goes out of control, right? Like you might be able to, you're not going to be able to buy a car with that money. I mean, that's possible at least. But my, you know, my def, my recommendation would be you have, you have to think about alternative value systems. And I'm not here to recommend a specific product. That's not my job. I'm an astrologer. But what I'm saying is the energies are pretty clear that our currency system is in a lot of trouble in, in, a, in a way that it never has been in our country's history. And so you have to really think, what are the hard assets that I can get behind? What are the alternative digital assets that I can get behind? What are things that are going to have transfer of value in other markets, other countries? That's going to be really significant. Um, because it's too much of a coincidence, it, 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 it's, it's too close of a coincidence that Venus is retrograding, conjuncting Pluto, pretty much, I think, the same day that Uranus does the third square with Saturn. That just screams to me a total shakedown of our financial system. Everything that we've put our trust in, implicitly or explicitly, is going to be called into question. And that combined with the supply chain, with a struggle to find workers, with, you know, all of these factors, it's really going to test the dollar. And if you think about the dollar as you, it's pervasive. It's almost what defines everything in our society. You could argue it is, it, it, it is the water that's coursing through and permeating everything and so when and, and it's almost the ultimate sign of trust so when that trust is no longer there it flips the script completely and everything else becomes a, like a fair game to be questioned so just be ready for that um, especially with the 2022 energies of the Pluto return which I'll talk about more in future videos but I, I, I think the, the likelihood of a Christmas Eve crash is very high. But the, the efficacy of that hypothesis is going to be clearer to me on this new moon. Things that happen on this new moon in particular are going to kind of give some breadcrumbs as to what might happen around Christmas Eve. So, you know, think about there's only six weeks or so, so between this new moon and, and Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, and so if the instability starts to really show around this new moon, then my, I think that hypothesis can, is going to be validated. Um, you know, and again, because we're going to have Venus and Capricorn very shortly thereafter, which is the sign it's going to be in for that huge moment on Christmas Eve. And, and, and by the way, Venus in Capricorn rules is going to add some financial flavor to that Capricorn energy. So we're going to be talking about not just your finances and my finances, but everyone's finances. What are the, where is the hub? You know, what is that? What are those frameworks, those financial frameworks that we all rely on? What are those network effects? And again, if the money is, if the inflation is out of control and the, and the value of the dollar is like whatever, the impacts are going to be so swift because it is so ubiquitous, because these systems are so centralized. And that's the final point I was, I, I was trying to make. We're living in an age of centralization, extreme centralization. Everything we do, every decision we make, every thought we have, is coming from a few very, very, very large networks of either platforms or government institutions or news networks. Everything is centralized. 
yeah, people say the internet is fragmented. But that's not really what's going on. It's almost like that people say that we're siloed as a way to justify this whole thing of like, we're different, we're divided. There's just a, a left and a right. It's not really true. Truth is, we're all being diluted by just a few very large institutions. And through this evolution and this destruction and this change and this instability, we have a chance amid this chaos to decentralize things in a, in a, in a healthy and positive way. Again, thinking about our neighbors, thinking about local organizations, local councils, local governments, not just a federal system, not just a technocratic system, not just a bureaucratic system, not just a medical industrial complex, not just a media industrial complex, but a new system from that, that works for everyone and it's built from the ground up. So I see this new moon all the way through early 2022 as a, a beautiful destruction, a healthy destruction. It is the breakdown before the breakthrough. And the breakthrough is a moment of clarity. And air signs like Aquarius deal with clarity. Clarity is what we need to evolve towards as we start to become citizens of the age of Aquarius. And so pay attention to the things that the, the intuition, the insights that you're getting. Go outside, take your shoes off, put them on the ground, actually feel the earth, unplug from the delusional systems, from the delusional networks. Practice mindfulness. Do something to get yourself out of the muck. Because we've spent so long being told what to do, how to act, what to say, who to say it to. Literally like the inflection points of how we say it. Everything is scrutinized. And that's a system of control. We are being controlled at all times. And with this Scorpio energy, we can see through that BS. Scorpio just pierces through the veil. And so pierce through that veil and come out with the utmost mental clarity, like a bird in flight over that mountain. If you can do that, then you're going to be ready for the next six months. So that was, uh, hopefully that was, hopefully that was insightful and, and, and fun. I feel like I was in a, like a, a trance there. Um, but I'm going to be doing, uh, the full moon in Taurus, which is also going to be very significant. And, um, yeah, just, uh, keep following along and, um, I'll talk to you all soon. Have a good night.